in the beginning of the first quarter of the 20th century, in 1923 to be precise, the Ghani family, the renowned Paris publishers, built Le Chateau La Croix en A in Normandy, France. Fast forward almost a hundred years to 2019, and my two friends sold everything they had to buy the chateau. How sad and unloved it looked after many years abandoned. There was so very much to do, from knocking down wall to dancing to the gramophone. I love you to join Miss Anna and Peter as they take you on a journey to make the chateau truly splendid again. Love all those renovation projects. Come and join them with an insight into their life in France. I'll show you around, old sport. So, our veranda project we have a big conservatory style veranda built in aluminium with a steel um, frame on the back of the chateau. Now unfortunately it's not something uh, that we would have ever built. It's on the sun terrace and we've often wondered what the terrace would look like without this veranda built on it. So let's start the project and I hope you enjoy. So it's been a long day today and a hot day today with the sun coming in right at the roof where it was hottest. So we've got all the heat gain, all the solar gain coming in on the poly there and then filling that void up. And of course, that's where we've been working today. But uh, anyway, we've got, the, um, we've got the framing up. So that is ready for the plasterboard now, but we need to insulate each of those panels and then plasterboard over the top of that and then smooth plaster over. And this is uh, this is the area where uh, Anna would like some fretwork, some sort of detail. So we're going to come off of the going to come off of the the window, uh, maybe two or three inches. And then within that, a sandwich in that of some fancy fretwork, which will paint white. And then... OK, day two. And uh, we're just getting the board up. So we've got three of the last boards up. We're just on the last full panel. Right. Poor Miss Anna has picked up an injury. Hurt my leg. Hurt your leg badly. Mm. I'm okay. So um, we've got to take things a bit easier today, haven't we? No. No. <laughs> All this is insulated with this heavy stuff here, which is great. So we're just battening this last bit. <laughs> and there's something very strange, right? Listen to this. This it's like a perpetual machine, right? Just take the truss away. Okay, so we have all the boarding up, is done and uh, insulated above. We just need to now put another, just another layer of uh, plaster up on those joints. The job to do now is to uh, create the framework for the infill panels on this granite. And we want to do it in such a way that we don't interfere with any of the granite. So. Um, drill into it, A, because it's rock hard, and B, if anyone wants to revert this later on back to its original state, um, they don't have too much work to so do. We thought, actually, we'll keep these details because they're quite, they're quite nice. So a panel in between, and we're going to white paint, masonry paint, those. Okay, it's half past eight. So we're just coming to the end of the plasterboard. I'm waiting for some more plasterboard to come in for these sections here. And we've just infilled, I had some off cuts, so I just infilled uh, and railed those two end sections. You see up in this detail there, where they chopped into the masonry to put the frame up for the 
conservatory. You see, oh, where are we? We've got quite a bit of damage here and then up in there. And then it's the same on the other side. You can see there where they've really hacked it about. But obviously this is going to be all in view. So I don't know whether to put a finishing strip Oh, where am I? A finishing strip along the bottom or do something a little bit more flush with the existing. Okay, we've got the ceiling done. The first few coats of paint are on. But it's already dropped the temperature in here quite nicely. Quite about four or five degrees when it's really hot. Just got to trim this foam back. This is where the people that installed the conservatory cut into the original stone and got their measurements wrong on both sides. Uh, we've got our plaster up here and here, the infill, and then we've got the first couple of coats of gloss on the doors. Um, not so worried about these doors because obviously they're not weather protecting now, they're just effectively outside doors which are um, inner doors. So the job today is we're going to lay the battening for the floor um, and what we're going to do is lay uh, board all the way around, batten all the way around the outside just following the perimeter of the deck and then at 300 centres so that means every 300 millimetres or 30 centimetres there'll be a batten coming out this way. So I've done my maths. So the first job today is to put uh, a batten in all around the outside. Um, this is slightly lighter than the ones we're going to use um, as the floor joist effectively. All going to sit on this concrete pad, done our maths to work out that the conservatory width is, where are we? It is eight meters, eight meters, eight and three quarter meters. So we're going to, at 30 centers, we're going to need 29.2 of these. So effectively 30 of these running all the way along. Okay, so we've done the floor, floor's down, and uh, very pleased with that. It's uh, actually come out surprisingly well, and only had a couple of boards left. So we're now moving on to these upper windows. So we're trying to, as part of this project, we're trying to de-conservatory this room as much as possible. And with so much glass, not only do we have a problem with heat, but it just shouts conservatory. So um, what we thought we'd do is put some fretwork up. Look what we found. Uh, these are three millimeter um, laser cut MDF panels, and they're actually meant as uh, radiator panels. They would normally be built into a box, go against the wall, and the radiator would sit behind. But here's the cunning plan. We think we could cut those in to um, window boxes at this height. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, using some timber, make a timber rail at the bottom and the top. And this is just a rough bit that I've used just to um, see if it works. Is we cut a rebate in the top, slightly deeper rebate in the top, and then a shallow rebate in the bottom. These get mounted all the way around at that window height level. And then the um, fretwork can slot up and down into that rebate, which means we can take them out to clean the windows. And that was the problem that I faced, is how do we build this so that we can still get to the windows afterwards, but 
uh, they cover up the windows during the day. Uh, nicely, that also then provides, with these at the bottom, that provides us a nice rail to mount uh, the Venetian blinds on. So the idea is that uh, we cut these out, mount them, the fretwork goes in, and then we can finish off with almost like a, a, a cover strip that goes all the way around, which will cover up the, the workings or uh, the top half of the Venetian blind. So it would be something like this. So really hopeful. So uh, what I need to do is to cut uh, these timber lengths here. We've got this timber here to cut. Uh, the problem we've got is that window panel there is slightly wider than those fretwork panels. So we'll have to put the fretwork panel in the centre and then the finishing strips either side just to cover them up. Uh, and then do the same on the other side. Say hello, Miss Anna! She hasn't stopped, so she's doing that's a horrible job. How many coats? One on the coat, one top coat. This is the second top coat now. So we're on the second top coat. And it's not s sapping it up like sponge? No, it's all right. Oh, because normally MDF is awful. It is, it is. It's got like a funny finish to it though, hasn't it? Maybe they might have machined a finish on there ready for paint or something. Yeah. Well done. It's so hot though. It's sticky, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Your head's out. My head? That's it, your head's back. Ah. I was looking at your work, you see. Anyway, you're looking at your boobies. I was looking at your boobies. No. No. Stop it. <laughs> it's a serious channel. <laughs> and I've marked out where my rebates need to go. So I'm just on the table saw now. I'm just going to cut in those rebates just here and dry fit the first one and see how it looks. And then if this works, then we'll just duplicate whatever we've done here on the rest of them. So that's the plan. So here's my rebates. Uh, the top one has got a slightly deeper rebate, if you remember, so it can go up and then down into the bottom one. The bottom one's got a shallow. And I've marked these depths onto my table saw, so when we come to duplicate all of the others, uh, the fretwork will all sit in the same position. Obviously, if they were deeper on some and not on others, uh, the fretwork would, wouldn't be even. The plan is to mount these in such a way that the top one slots up and in, so we're going up and in that slightly higher and that will then allow us to then drop back down again to the, to the level so it will look like that. Just doing a quick update. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll start with a step. Yeah. So we put in a couple of steps where we had a change of surface and didn't really want to take that with wood, did we? And there's the other one. You can see there's a slight step up. Ironically, the salon, into the salon, is perfect height. That's the same height going all the way through. So when we open those doors in the summer, we'll have the same floor height. But this deck is not being formed completely square, so this side is slightly higher. And we could have trimmed down all the battens, but that would have been a big job. And today, what we're going to do is we're just going to do the all the infills. So just here, uh, we're going to do a couple of infills, and then do a box at the end to box that in.
So we want to build a sort of windowsill and uh, have a ledge to put lamps and maybe if you're sat in here uh, to put your coffee on. So uh, the way we're going to do that is basically come out from each panel around about 25-30 centimetres, uh, come out to the corner here, return it with a mitre and then continue it down, uh, follow that line there and then return it in. So it'll give us uh, a window ledge that sits along there. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to make up a frame um, to hold uh, an MDF face board. So I'm not using plasterboard, using MDF it'd be a bit stronger. So we've got um, these window ledges finished, strong, um, and then of course we've done the same for the other side. So the other side is done. Um, out in the rain actually we had this old three lengths of old picture rail that came from the UK. Uh, it's quite a nice profile detail. So um, we've just run that over the top. But the most difficult job was doing these infills because we had to do them in such a way that we could still lift uh, this fretwork panel up and out and down to be able to clean the glass behind. So I had to do all of those, um, I suppose filler panels, that's what they are, I had to do all of those so they sit behind uh, the fretwork. Obviously if they sat in front they would uh, interfere with it. And then uh, we've got the pelmet that runs around the bottom, just here. I've just corked all of the joints. Inevitably, uh, there's going to be some gaps. So uh, just waiting for that to dry now. Can't do too much tonight. Waiting for that to dry. And then tomorrow, uh, I'm going to take all the fret panels out, uh, mount these back panels properly, uh, fill in the little gaps at the top, and then give it its first coat of paint. And for the skirting board of our new plinths, I managed to find five lengths of this stuff, and it was eight euros from a brocante. And we're just going to cut it in now so it goes down this side, along here, around that return, and into there for both sides.
So I've had to buy some pine board. And I'm just going to go and cut those down into 23 uh, or 230 millimetre lengths. And then I can then miter them in. Okay, so we've got the ledges uh, all cut in. They're okay, and the same on the other side here. So uh, the job to do now is just to uh, try and get this timber, which is obviously this, uh, this softwood timber here, uh, to try and get that stained as close as we can to uh, this color at the bottom. This is just a coated MDF. Before we varnish it, I'm just going to use uh, this light oak uh, dye and perhaps give that a couple of coats just to get that colour the same. Okay, so that's the first coat of stain on. And actually, I don't think we're gonna need much more than two. Put another coat on when that dries. And then once it's got the gloss on it, it won't look too dissimilar to that. Okay, we're getting to the end of the, um, the fit out now. We uh, um, put up some coving here, but had tremendous trouble because there's such um, an uneven surface to these uh, window reveals that any chance of getting coving to run across flush was impossible. So I've had to go against all my principles and, and just put the coving across and then uh, pop in some expanding foam underneath. So I'm going to chop that off tomorrow. In fact, it's a similar repair to what I've done in these corners over here where I foamed them and then plastered over the top. This is where the stonework was cut away. So I know it works, but I'd rather not use it. And while I was there, I've rest, used the rest of the can. I've taken up all the small gaps that were at the bottom of the, the flooring. Okay, so we've pretty much done in here now. We've got all the framework up, as you can see. Uh, the ceiling is done. We've also put the blinds up. We didn't film that because just putting blinds up, but they're all up. We've given it a clean. And then we've come to the quandary of the floor. So we looked into uh, getting a nice flooring for this. We looked at koi carpet, and then we looked at coconut matting. And quite frankly, we couldn't justify it the price. Reluctantly, we uh, are thinking about what we can do on a budget. We can put a rug in. We've got plenty of rugs, so we're gonna put a rug in. But for the flooring itself, we're going to try to do a dark wood timber effect. It's called uh, full bois over here. It's where you paint a material that isn't wood to look like wood. You can buy all fancy um, grain uh, rollers and special brushes. We're going to try and do it as cheaply as possible. So uh, what we're going to do is put down a light, you put down a light color first, and we've just got this because it was cheap. Uh, so that will be our base coat, and then a couple of shades of brown, dark brown, and a very, very dark brown with a load of black in it. Um, that goes down next, so we'll we're, we're film that as we go. Uh, we've already filled all of the joints, and we're going to use the joint lines as a reference point. So each joint, each, each of these panels will be three planks. That's the plan, so we've got to me measure that out. So. That's the plan, hope it comes out all right, because if it does, it'll look great. If it doesn't, it'll look awful. But let's give it a go, because it's not gonna cost much. We've got 25 euros in paint.
Okay, so let's go and have a look, shall we? Oh, no. So it's just through here, guys. And hopefully it's going to be a bit different to the last time you saw it. So let's have a look. Please help my good friends, press like and subscribe to stay tuned for further adventures. This is old sport.